Hi, this is Dale is coming at you with a video on soccer tennis. Yep, that's what I said, soccer tennis. It may sound strange, but this sport is gaining popularity worldwide. In fact, there is even a soccer tennis world championship. And there's even a soccer tennis video game. Besides the competitive aspects of soccer tennis, it can also help you improve your soccer game. Even professional soccer players use soccer tennis as part of their training. Plus, it's fun playing with teammates in practice, or even friends or siblings in the backyard. Okay, so just a little background on the game that in some places in the world is called footnet or football tennis. It began in the early 1920s in former Czechoslovakia. When players from Slavia Prague Football Club were messing around at practice by volleying a soccer ball back and forth over a wooden bench and then a rope to eventually moving on to a tennis court. These guys had so much fun competing with each other in this made up game that it eventually caught on and became an actual sport. Now, the game can be played just about anywhere, not just on a tennis court. Basically anywhere that is large enough for a makeshift court can be used, like a backyard, soccer field, or driveway. You just need to mark off the field perimeter, often by using four cones, one in each corner. If you don't have cones, you can get creative by using shirts, shin guards, water bottles, or anything else you might have on hand. You'll also need to designate where the midline is with a rope or, when possible, a soccer tennis net. I got my portable soccer tennis net through an online soccer store. So what else do you need to play soccer tennis? Traditionally, a size 5 soccer ball is used. However, any soccer ball works. I usually don't use a futsal ball because they are heavier and don't bounce as well as a soccer ball. But if you're playing in an area where you need to be more cautious of the ball going bouncing off, you may want to consider using a football ball. So for shoes, you actually don't even need to wear shoes for soccer tennis. But any sneakers or soccer shoes will work, so long as they're appropriate for the surface you're playing on. And perhaps the most important thing to have to play this game is players, of course. So, how many players? The game can be played between two or more people with space permitting. I've played 1v1 with my most being 4v4, but I've heard of people playing with even more players on each side. Professional games are usually played as singles, doubles, or triples. As with any game, it's best to have rules laid out from the start, or most of the game will be spent arguing. Traditionally, the rules for soccer tennis are somewhat similar to tennis. Before you start, you need to decide who's serving first. When my brother and I play, we usually do best out of three in rock, paper, scissors to determine who will be serving first. The serve can start on the ground or in the air. This is the server's preference. The serve must be made from behind the line. If the server faults on their serve, and they can fault by one, accidentally stepping on the playing field when serving, two, hitting the ball into the net, or three, not getting the ball over the net. If the server faulted on the first serve, they're allowed one more attempt. If they fault on their second attempt, then the point and serve goes to the opposing team. At least, that is how my brother and I play. Whenever one side scores, they get the next serve. Some games are played by alternating serving side every five serves. 
regardless of who scores. Also, most games go by three touches and one bounce per side. This means that when side A serves the ball, side B must return the serve to team A's court with only one bounce on the ground and no more than three touches per side, not per player. Players can use their heads, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes to touch the ball or even hit it over the net into their opponent's court. However, the ball cannot touch a player's arm or hand. If it does, the point goes to the other team. When playing the game, a team gets a point when the opposing team does one of the following eight things. Get it bounced twice on their side. One player takes too many touches. They return it into the net. They return it over the net but out of bounds. A player touches the net by accident. The ball touches a player's hand or arm. They double fault on their serve. The ball bounces on their side first before it goes over. In regards to scoring, the game is played to 11, 15, or 21 points. If the game is tied, then it must be won by two clear points. These are just traditional rules. However, there are many variations of these rules. Give it a try. It may sound complicated at first, but really, once you start playing, it will all make sense. Let me know if you want a match.